Well, for the most part, there wasn't a lot of violence in my home early on. My parents were hippies, and they preached about, you know, anti-gun, anti-violence. They didn't want me fighting in school, and yet at the same time, my father was violent with me. And then my mother came in and with a belt, just hit all of us, and we were naked, you know, uh, just just hit us all, you know, and that that would be the earliest memory. I remember hiding in the laundry. Uh, and, and underneath dirty clothes and watching my mom stomp around with the belt trying to find you to, you know, give you some, some what, what for, you know. Scary. And, uh, Scary and staying at my friend's house is to, to, to just be somewhere kind of normal, mm -hmm. you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, every kid, I think, wants that love from their family, and if you're not getting it at home, you're going to go somewhere and try to find it. Years old, uh, I remember uh, my mother uh, telling my father to administer corporal punishment. And my father was a very kind man, and he would put us on his lap and slap his own uh, hand to make it sound, and he'd tell us to, uh, to, to cry, to cry. And uh, my, I remember my mother coming in and seeing what he was doing and getting so furious at my dad for not uh, uh, whooping us. Uh, and then she, from then on, administered all the corporal punishment. I mean, my cousin got shot by the police in San Jose. They were doing robberies and things. It was like my normal day, life day was seeing my older siblings get on ski masks and shotguns and go get, we're going to work and then we'll see you when we get back. Wow. Okay, that was a normal. Wow. And that was in high school? That was in high school. Wow. Okay, and that was supposed to be normal. I did a burglary with a, my best friend and we stole some guns. Mm -hmm. So I always had a, a way out, you know, that I, I thought I was going to commit suicide. And then at the very end... How did you think to commit suicide? You're 11 years old. It just... It, it's a survival it, I, I wanted out. You know, I, I wasn't happy here. I wasn't having a good life. And um, I just wanted out. And he, uh, uh, one time, I, I believe, saved my life because my mother was uh, beating me so bad. He says, Raquel, you're killing the child. I can't even remember what I did. Scout. And the funny thing was, all the other scouts all feared my dad. They all saw him as being different. He's a little boy, like eight years old, and I said, uh, his name was Chris. I said, Chris, I'll always be there for you, your whole life. I was always going to be there for you. And I've been able to do that. I've been able to do, be a really good dad, mm -hmm. uh, help him, coach him, and he was an all-state football player. That I have uh, I never, ever hit him. You know, there's been arguments, but never hit him. Mm -hmm. And then I have two beautiful other daughters who are 14 and 8. Uh, you know, we laugh, we go out to uh, dinner and we laugh, we have fun. I help coach them, we talk about old times. It is 180 degrees from what it was that when I was raised. I don't want him to have the opportunity to be a criminal first before he gets educated and can make up his own mind about his life. Mm -hmm. I didn't want him to be around people that would put poison in your food. I, I, I was afraid to be around him because I might just hit him or something for some, like you said, you knew when it was, when you were wrong, it was too late though, because you've already, uh, you know, that anger comes forward and you go, what am I doing? You know, why am I doing this?